Okay, in this video, we're going to look at gymnosperms and angiosperms. If you don't know at this point, gymnosperms typically look like this. We're looking at pine trees being a prime example, and angiosperms being plants that are producing flowers. So gymnosperms, let's start with these. There's different um, phyla that consist of them. I'm going to focus mainly just on two main ones here. Conifers is probably what you're most familiar with. There are trees that produce their seeds in cones, and most have needle-like leaves. It's the example of conifers. Be another example of a conifer here. That one uh, you might be familiar with seeing are ginkgos, or at least familiar hearing about. Only one living species left, but what makes them distinctive is that they have these fan-shaped leaves. So both of these are gymnosperms, so I want you to think it's just only needle-like leaves. They can also have these kind of fan-shaped leaves. And these would be classified both as what we call naked seed plants here. And angiosperms are going to be those flowering. So these don't actually produce set flowers. Uh, they're producing, in this case, these cones, um, but they both are producing seeds. So sticking with those gymnosperms, a life cycle of conifers is typical of gymnosperms. That's why we're using them kind of as our example here. Coniferms from two types of cones. Seed cones contain the female gametophytes, and that's located here. Then pollen cones contain pollen grains, which is the male gametophytes, and they look like this. Pollen grains are dispersed by wind to the seed cones. The fertilized seed cones produce seeds, which are also wind dispersed. The germinated seed will grow into a new sporified plant. You see that here. If you've ever looked out, and particularly the springtime, and it looks like a pine tree's on fire, it's like its smoke is pouring off it. It's, it's literally the pollen. So the, what these um, gymnosperms do, in this case these conifers, they're producing a lot of pollen. They're dispersing it through the air in hopes that just by mass producing pollen, they're able by odds to get the male pollen grains to find the female ovule here. And again, they're just producing tons and tons and tons of pollen. It can almost look like smoke coming off a tree to find that female um, ovule. In contrast to that, angiosperms they produce flowers. They invest a lot of energy in these flowers to attract pollinators. So a little different um, reproductive strategy here. 90% of all living plant species are angiosperms. Virtually all of our food is derived directly or indirectly from angiosperms. You see here. Angiosperms use flower to induce uh, insects and other animals to carry pollen for them. So an example here, instead of these plants investing a ton of energy and producing a lot of just pollen grains and hoping it makes it with the wind, they're investing their energy in producing less pollen, but spending time to attract uh, pollinators. Flower anatomy, so the basic structure of flower consists of four um, distinctive circles here, or whorls, connected to the base here. Four key terms, uh, sepals are the outermost whorl and typically protect the flower from physical damage. The petals we're probably most familiar with, they're the second whorl to serve to attract pollinators. And that's what looks usually looks pretty. The stamens contain the male parts, we see here, um, that produce the pollen. At the tip of the filament is an anther that contains the pollen. We see that kind of zoomed in portion here. This green region here, um, the pistil or the carpal, contains the female parts that produce the egg. The ovules occur at the bulging base of the carpal called the ovary. The stalk is called the style, and this gives rise from the ovary to the end of the sticky tip called a stigma, which receives the pollen. So sometimes this portion here, stigma, you might want to think of sticky stigma, and then the style, and then we have down here the ovary. So pollen needs to go from the anther here to be transferred to this stigma so it can reach the ovary. Good terms you should be kind of reviewing and familiar with and be able to identify different parts of the flower. Again, looking at that in a slightly different image here, um, this, you see the same thing, the carpels, the stamens, the petals, the sepals, pro, on a different flower here. So you don't just accustom to just this one single set image. Be able to recognize it on different images. Same thing here, you see a lot of the same stuff, the female and male parts, and um, Christmas lilium, very distinctive pollen grains here. Um, and we notice our stigma, our sticky stigma, and the pollen needs to get from here to here and travel down here to the ovule. Again, zooming in on those parts here, kick myself over to this side, and we can see that there is a very set similar 
um, distinctive regions, but we want need to be able to distinguish the different male and female portions and realize that the stigma, the style, and the ovary, or the ovule here, are all part of the female. The pollen grains, the microspores, the anthers, the filaments, all of those are portions of the male parts of the flower.